What's going on, everybody? My name is Coach Stefan, and welcome to the Everyday Pursuit Podcast. If you're watching this and you've been watching, I have a little bit different setup. My camera is usually over there. I brought it a little bit closer. So hopefully this helps the quality because the past, like, man, I don't know, a few episodes, quality has been a little bit better. So try to move things around, try to upgrade some stuff, see if it, it's a little bit better. I know the audio is fire from these. These mics are really good. But if you watch on YouTube um, and, and social media, sorry, I know the last couple episodes were a little bit grainy. So I, I'm thinking this is going to help. We'll see when it drops. Um, super excited. But this episode specifically, I, I think I decided to make for our current clients. If you guys don't know, and if you are a client, you know, but if you're not, we have hundreds of clients all over America. I think at the time of recording this in October of 23, we have uh, almost 200 clients in about 40 something different states. We have an in-person gym in Arizona. So a lot of times I, you know, I, I get on these calls, I welcome the clients, but then they're with our coaches for a lot of the, the time frame. And our coaches are so, so, so good at what they do. Uh, I trust them with my life and obviously with our clients, but I feel like some people might not have a good insight into like what my life looks like. And now that we've been welcoming a lot of people and we've actually had like a 50% growth this year over last year. So we're just growing and growing and it's awesome and I feel super blessed, but that's not what this is about. This is about um, telling you guys a little bit about how I find time to balance my life. And I want you to get to know me a little bit better because I think that you understanding where I come from should help a lot of people in their fitness journey because I want, I hope that I relate to a vast majority of you and maybe not in every aspect of my life, but hopefully the ones that matter, uh, specifically me being in the military, my wife being a nurse, me being busy and being a dad. And I know, again, that's not going to relate to every single person, but it's like, if I can do this thing and give you guys an insight into how I stay fit and what I do with my health as somebody that kind of does all the things, like I run a business and I have kids and I was in the military and I went to college. I've done all the things. I've been married. I've been divorced. I've deployed to Afghanistan. I've gone to different schools for different things. I've held different jobs and I'm only 32. And that's not to brag. It's just, I've gone through a lot of life things. And so I'm hoping that I can give you some perspective on how I am successful. Right. And I think that if I can teach you guys to do it, you know, your own way, but like with a twist, right but also just look at the lessons that I've done. I think it will make more sense. So what I specifically want to talk to you guys about is how to balance your life and how I balance my life. And this episode, usually I'm like, hey, you guys, you guys, you should do this. This episode is going to be about me, not in a selfish way, but I want to talk about my life because I think it's going to give you guys a better perspective on like what I specifically do. And then you can apply it to yourself however you want, or we can have a conversation about that. So for me and my life right now, uh, a little bit crazy. As of the day of recording this podcast, like beginning of October, I have a baby boy that's going to be due any day. My wife's like 38 weeks pregnant, about to pop. Uh, very, very excited. But I would be lying if I didn't say I was a little bit nervous. And it's not that I'm nervous to be a parent. If you guys don't know, I have another son that's 13. I know, big age gap. So the nervousness comes with like, man, I've kind of established this lifestyle the past, geez, like eight years where my son's been relatively self-sufficient um, to where I've been able to build a business and prioritize my fitness journey and do all these things. And life changes when you have kids. If you have kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I haven't had to go through that in a like a long, long, long time. And so I'm going to break this down into a little bit of, of like different framework so you guys understand. First, let's talk about what you're probably listening to this for is fitness, okay? Right now, I have, and and probably since, so like I actually started Pursuit, like I've been coaching for 13 years, but I started Pursuit as far as, I'm sorry, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. Um, as far as the online coaching, like I'm a full-time online coach in May of uh, 21, um, but I did it before then, like, in different gyms and long story, but, um, so I'm just going to say it's been two and a half years. Okay. And in two and a half years, my life has been absolutely nonstop. 
In fact, probably before those two and a half years, if I'm very honest with myself, I also went to three years of college where I did a lot. I went to school and I did a major and a minor. Plus I went um, and, and did certifications while I was doing that. Um, and right after, plus I had, you know, my son and a family and my wife was going to nursing school and I was getting in shape for fitness modeling and working part-time, if not full-time. I went three years with zero breaks, like year round, no summers off besides like, you know, winter break or whatever, no long breaks, no summers off. Cause I was on the GI bill from the military. And if I didn't go full-time, I lost my rent, which I couldn't afford X I was broke. And so that was, I went from like three years of just grinding my ass off at school straight into, actually I did have a, when the pandemic hit, I had a job, but I didn't really do a lot on the side. But if you know me, I can't just do a one 40 hour a week job. I don't thrive there. I am a grinder and, and, but like the last two and a half years has been the next level of what I thought I was capable of. Like school, I was very busy. I worked my butt off. I'm very proud of that. Not just because I'm like, I got a degree, that's that's not it. But if you know my backstory and you listen to, and if you listen, don't know, go to the Origin Story podcast, long podcast, but it's more in depth of like where I came from. And for me, it was like, I never thought I was going to go to college. And I probably, not realistically, and if I did, I thought I would like barely scrape by and end up doing well. And the reason I say that is because I, some people are like, man, I worked so hard. I just want to get to this point. And I've realized in the past two and a half to three years, that it is about enjoying the journey instead of that destination, because sometimes a destination isn't really there. And I can tell you from somebody that hit a destination, I'm doing finger quotes right now, um, that I felt like, oh, well, once I'm there, and if you're, I'm 32, about to be 33. So if you're as old or older than me, you know that like sometimes those points don't actually exist. You think, oh, when I get there, things will be better and whatever. I've learned, I have learned that that is not life. Life is about enjoying the journey. And I've learned a ton of lessons in the two and a half years about myself. I've had to challenge myself. I've had to push myself. I've had to find out how to balance my life. So first is fitness. I can openly admit, very, very open about this, that my, I don't want to say my fitness has suffered, but I've been more up and down with my fitness the past two and a half years than I ever have in my entire life. I'm more sedentary. I mean, look at... <laughs> Look what I'm doing right now, right? Um, I know you guys think, oh, Coach Stefan is an online coach and he owns a company and he must just make a bunch of money and he must just get a workout all the time. And like, that's so far from it. You have no idea. Um, I When I say that I work 12 to 14 hours, six days a week, sometimes seven. And on the seventh day, I don't also work 12 to 14 hours. I usually work like five um, for two and a half years. I'm really not kidding. I've taken very minimal vacations. I don't ever really take a full day off. And I think the first six months, again, that's not me bragging. I'm going to tell you about the balance thing. <laughs> the first six months, it was such a hard time to find like the motivation for fitness. Cause I went from during from college, then I had a job for like a year and I was working two jobs. I'm not going to get into that, but I was doing this part time until it became full time online. And I worked as a project manager. And during that time, once I transitioned to this full time, I thought, oh my God, I'm going to have so much time to work out as long as I want. And little did I know, being a CEO and an entrepreneur and a small business owner, you wear all the hats and then some, and it is so much work, especially with a family. And I'm not, I'm not digging on people that don't have families, but I have friends that are do the exact same job and they just have a girlfriend and they have no kids. And they can basically work as late as they want and travel and do all these things. And when you have a kid in school and about to have another baby and two dogs and a cat, which we do, uh, you don't have that privilege. And it's okay. I'm, I'm, dude, that's awesome that those people are in those chapters, but I have to do my life a little bit differently. And so, again, the reason reason I'm reiterating that is I hear a lot of people like, oh, but you, oh, but you, you're you're a fitness coach, so you just get to work out all the time. No, right? When I was in the military, when I was a project manager, when I was in school full time and working part time, yeah, a lot of that time I had like a, something I was doing in fitness, but that was not my main revenue stream whatsoever. Um, and I still had tons and tons and tons of other responsibilities. The reason I put that out there is because a lot of people use, oh, I'm busy or I have all this stuff going on as an excuse. It's no excuse. It's just prioritizing what's important to you. 
But I will say the first six months of working this business, I struggled. I had some anxiety attacks. I had some panic attacks. Uh, I way overtasked myself. I also do some business coaching. So I like did really well with doing online coaching because I had already 10 years of training experience. So I ended up like hiring a coaching company. Then they hired me to coach coaches, which I know sounds weird, but I was coaching people to do what I've done and did sales for them. And now I'm working with my third coaching company. And that's kind of like a side thing that I really enjoy doing because I want to help people. I am a coach, right? So now I'm coaching my employees and our coaches within pursuit to do it, but I'm also helping other business owners. And so I have always a lot going on. And again, I thrive like that, but I'm putting that out there so you guys understand. But the first six months I had no regulation and I overtasked myself like an idiot. And I say an idiot because like I knew that I shouldn't have done it, but I did. And I had my fitness suffer a lot. I started to gain a little bit of uh, a belly for me. I was getting out of shape. I felt really low energy. Like I would literally wake up at 5 a.m., get on my phone immediately, and I wouldn't get off till like 8.30 p.m. and then just go to sleep to start over again, day after day after day. You want to talk about unhealthy? Very unhealthy. Um, and part of that is part of being a business owner. But again, I was working basically two jobs, like my business plus a side thing. Didn't last for that long because I finally pulled myself up by my bootstraps. I'm like, dude, I can't do that. Um, but balancing a life, balancing fitness was really, really challenging for me. And then probably a year in, I felt like I, and I know a year is a long time, but it it's a learning lesson. I've I've owned a fitness business before and I've done like manager positions and ran gyms and things, but this is a whole different beast because I never wore all the hats. Even when I did in-person private training and had my own company right after I got out of the military, it, it was a little bit different because I didn't really do a lot of like marketing. I got to work at a gym and like, I kind of got the people that came into the gym. Uh, I developed all my own programs. I did all my own like sales and stuff like that, but this is way more work. <laughs> and I didn't manage employees. It was a solo business. Um, so again, wearing all the hats was really challenging. And it was about a year in until I really told myself like, you know, you're going to have to like, you can't, put money success over your fitness success or a couple things happen. You're not practicing what you preach. And I think long-term you're going to be unhappy. And I still, to this day, have battled with that. Okay. Um, because I, I'm so passionate about what I do that it's very hard for me to not work, not because I have the scarcity mindset. You see a lot of people, they work a lot because it's either, I feel like a two track that I see as in the entrepreneurial industry is like, they people work a lot because they're really, really want a lot of things like travel, material, money. Okay. Or they work a lot because they're scarcity, like, oh my God, my business is going to fail. I'm kind of actually more, I mean, yes, I'm probably more on the first side, but I'm also on the side of like, this has my name on it. And I care about my coaches and I want them to show up and be like, I love where I work. And I want you guys, the clients, or if you're not a client, I want our clients to sit there and be like, I love my coach and I love working with this company. And we've had really good feedback and really good reviews since we started because everybody pours their heart and soul. And that is, it's hard to, to have something that you that's work, but also your passion. It is, it, it, it's a mesh. It's very strange to me. And I've had it before. I mean, I've been coaching for 13 years, but like, this is different. Before it was like, ah, oh, it's kind of my business and I, I did it, but it's like a brand. I mean, this is where training people all over the US. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just so much different. And the reason I tell you that is because I've had to like, basically put probably 80% of my mental capacity and daily effort every day for two and a half years into my business. 80%, not kidding. Ask my wife, ask my son, ask my family, ask my friends. Holy moly. And I talk about the five buckets of life. If you don't know them, faith, fitness, family, friends, and finances. And my buckets have been all out of whack for a long time. And I knew that the things that were suffering to be open and transparent with you guys was my marriage, was my parenting and my faith. And I really have taken a huge step back as the business grew and I... I went and looked for people that were doing what I wanted to do that I looked up to as a person, like their morals and who they were. And I'm like, how did you do this? What have you done? Because I knew that I could do it all. I knew I had the capability, but like, 
man, I, I think I, if I could have went back, I think I took it in a wrong pattern. I was like, I'm just going to grind and I'm just going to work harder. And it was at the expense of some things that I'm trying to repair now. And I'm trying to go back and fix it. And even some of my fitness, like I, I got to the point where I'm like, I'm going to keep getting in better shape. And then I just kind of hit the, uh, like, uh, not lazy. I still train really good, but there's some things that I wanted to do. I wanted to end up doing a, a competition, bodybuilding competition, just to do it, just see how I did. I wanted to do some more like fitness events that I just put on the back burner. I was going to get surgery on my meniscus and I'm like, ah, no, nah, I just wait till my business is in a better spot, which maybe is a, a good decision. But you know, now I'm dealing with some stuff that I just put on the back burner and I put my business before everything else. And so was it worth it? Hmm. Yes and no. I mean, I feel like life is about decisions and you just have to live with them. And I would say yes, but I, but you have to catch it before it gets too bad. And I basically, which again, I probably would have done a little bit different. I basically was like going to the edge of everything in my life. Like I'll get, I'll, I'll still look good. I'll still be healthy, but like, I'm really going to push the boundaries. Like, um, you know, I'm, up, <laughs> I'm still going to be a loving husband and a loving dad, but like, man, I'm really going to just push the boundaries. And with my work, you know, I'd give it, give it all. And I think something that's not talked about, I know this isn't a business podcast, but is the fact that when you really try something and you start, it takes everything. Like I have a client um, that's a PhD student that owns his own business. That's super busy. And this guy is always stressed and always tired. And every week we have the check-ins and I'm like, bro, I get it. It's, it's the life. There's no shortcuts. It's the life. Why do you think not everybody has their PhD? It is freaking hard. Like, holy moly. Plus you're trying to have a business. Plus you have a relationship. Plus, you know, all the things and you're working out five or six days a week. And this dude is an absolute killer and he works so hard. And sometimes when you're in the grind, it feels like the grind will never stop. Like there's zero light at the end of the tunnel. And I think life chews people and spits them out there in, in that journey. And I see a lot of fitness coaches, a lot of people try to start businesses. And I know because I'm in business coaching guys with doctors, with fitness coaches, with physical therapists. I do a lot of coaching people's businesses and I see people and like, it's like, one to okay, not one, two to five years of like hard grinding. And that is hard when, when you're in it, it's hard. Like I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to give up now, not give up on what I'm doing, but just, it's so challenging where you're like, I'm done. I'm just done. I'm done with everything. I hope you guys have had those days or maybe I'm the only one, but just being vulnerable, like it, life sometimes gets so challenging. And I've even had my fitness journey. Like I've sat there and I'm like, man, I've been going to the gym and lifting for 17 years consistently. Like I almost wish that I could just like not make it part of my life. Like I've had those conversations. I've had those things. And I think balancing life in general is challenging. And then you throw a family into it and you throw your career into it and you throw your personal aspirations and goals. And maybe you're having issues with your family or your friend dynamic. And I'm a person, guys, I've had that all. I've had relationships with my close, close family be very hindered. Um, I've had relationships with my friends. I mean, it's life. I mean, like, I'm I'm no different than you guys. I'm no different. I have the same stress, the same anxiety, the same, and I'm not saying we're the same. I'm just telling you as a person, feelings of depression, feelings of wanting to give up, feelings of excitement, the opposite, right? Feelings of like, getting pumped and motivated. I, I'm a person, I have all those emotions and it is really hard to balance everything else on top of that. But here's how I have been able, this is probably what you've been waiting the whole podcast for. Here's how I've been able to kind of, I, I think really put myself in a better perspective. Um, and really all it is, is slowing down, which is, if you talk to anybody that's close to me, I don't do well at that. But I think for so long, I just, I knew that it was going to be a grind that I was like, all right. And I, you, you almost have to have this like aggressive mindset. I actually see it with our clients, which is really, really powerful tool. It's, it's destructive long-term, but short-term, it's the best thing you can do. And I'm going to tell you, I say aggressive mindset because in my head and um, not to use language on the podcast, but in my head, I'm just like, 
get out of my effing way. Like I'm going to just run through this. I don't care. Nothing's going to stop me. It's just like David Goggins. If you don't know who he is, then you won't get it. But like, he's like, I'm hard mother effer. Like he is just this guy that, you know, is this super mentally strong guy. That's just like, I will just do it until I die. And sometimes in life, it takes that mindset to get through a really like challenging spot. I mean, think about something you've done where like when you were in it, you're like, this is the hardest thing ever. I'm never going to get past it. And I feel like there you, three things happen. Most people, they just kind of like cower and they fail. Most people, the second person, they, they succeed, but like they come out beaten up and like they come out and they're like, I made it through, but like, wow, that was so hard. And they didn't really like, I mean, they, they made it through. They didn't really learn anything from it. They just like got through and it just like beat the crap out of them. And like, hey, cool, you accomplish X, Y, Z, whatever. And then the only other option I think is to just make it your bitch. Like whatever you're going through, you're like, yeah, you have nothing on me. I'm going to absolutely kill it. I'm going to freaking crush it. Like get out of my way. And I feel like if I don't flip that really aggressive switch when I'm challenged, uh, I end up giving up. I did this a lot, a lot in my younger years and my like, I don't know, 17, 18 to like early 20s um, with different things in my life because I always thought I could just put in like minimal effort and coast because I was like, had some talent or had some skill or had this going for me. And I see this a lot with people's fitness journey. They go, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to try, but it's crazy because I see some of our clients that, and I can tell by how they speak about their fitness journey, how they speak about themselves when they get like, you know, beast mode, right? They're like, dude, I don't care whatever's going to go out of my way. And some of that is emotional motivation that comes and goes, but there's a switch that I think everybody has in them where they can switch on their like warrior switch, their aggression switch. And mine just was on for a long time because I knew it was going to be not just like three months of grinding. I knew it was going to be years. And I knew that I only had an option A and everybody was depending on me. At first it was just me, right? It was, oh, I started this business. It's just me and it's my family. Oh, and then I hired an employee and now I have six and I have 200 clients. So now a lot of people are depending on me and I had to get more aggressive and more aggressive and more aggressive. And then I got to a point where, and when I say aggressive, I'm not like mean, it's just that like grit, that like no emotion. And I talk about this a lot about temporarily turning off emotions. I do think it's a superpower. I don't think it's good long-term. I think it'd be very damaging long-term, but I think turning off the emotions that want to make you just be softer are, is very valuable. And that's, that is probably the number one contributor to my success. I don't care if I'm tired. I don't care if I don't want to do it. I don't care if I X, Y, Z, it needs to be done. So I'm doing it very powerful. But I got to the point where I got so pu pulled into the mission that things suffered. My fitness suffered. It did. I started eating like shit. I started drinking more. I neglected probably time with my wife, um, with my son, just being vulnerable with you guys. And it was so mission driven, but I, again, it, it required me to slow down, which was a challenge. And the slowdown was this, well, Stefan, what are you doing this for? Like, what is this for? What is the end goal? Is the, is the journey so miserable like that the end goal is going to be worth it. And, and I'll give you guys an example that you might be able to relate to. And this is actually part of the reason I got out of the military. Um, cause I would hear people in the military. Okay. And it's a little bit different because some people can like retire at, you know, let's just say 45, they do 20 years in the military. They're done. Most people work part-time, but you get my drift, right? You join when you're 20, uh, or sorry, 40 join when you're 20, you do 20 to 25 years. You retire when you're 40 to 45. And some people are like, it's so worth it. You get to retire young and you get this money forever and then you can do whatever you want. And I go, yeah, but if you hate your job, you're literally giving up the best years of your life, right? Like, you know, the joke is after 40, you start falling apart and you're broken. So 20 to 40, some of the best years of your life, physically, health-wise, whatever, to just be set up for the rest of your life. But if you're so depressed and hate your life and hated your job and your marriage is broken, you got a divorce and your kids don't like you, wow, cool. Now you're, you're retired early for a miserable life and you gave up the most important years of your life. And, and, and part of me started to really have that conversation with myself. Like, is it worth going through this and, and getting to that point where things suffered to where you're like, 
you know, oh, I have this business and I have this money and I have, I have these things. And I really had to like readjust it because I realized at first I told myself it was only going to be a few years. Right. And then I realized what I actually wanted to grow this business into. And I said, no, this is a, this is a 10 year thing. Can I keep this going for 10 years? Can I work the way I do? Can I put things off that are important to me the way, like, can I, can I sustain the lifestyle? Am I going to burn out? And when I say a burnout, I'll be really transparent with you guys. I burn out. I was sent to the hospital once or twice from overworking. Uh, I, and, and look, I'm not condoning this whatsoever. I actually wish I would have self-regulated a little bit better, but I was so pumped for what I do. And I became so mission driven that I was blinded to some signs, some symptoms. And, uh, I'm just being vulnerable with you guys about how it is balancing a life doing this because I still have those same things you guys have. And it, it really just was sitting down, slowing down journaling, I think is really helpful. And like, and, and I don't write these like long journals, like today I feel like this. It's literally writing down, like, what are the positives of this business? What are the negatives? What is the worst that could happen? What's the best that could happen? Like these lists. And I have some of my clients do this with their fitness. Like, okay, right now I'm 40 pounds overweight. I'm out of shape, blah, blah, blah. How is this impacting your life? Realistically, if you don't change, what is, what is your life going to look like? How, what is that going to show up as? If you did change, what doors could it open? And like, sometimes people have to go through those thought processes. And when I say slow down, we make a lot of our clients, or at least of the ones that I worked with, and I know our coaches have done this, make a planner, make a, a whatever it is, Google calendar, schedule, organize. That's slowing down because most of the time we just go, 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 you know, on our phones, consume, consume, consume content news, and we never slow down. And when you're not slow and focused, you can't organize and you can't prioritize. Okay. Repeat that. When you haven't slowed down, it's impossible to prioritize and organize. Like you have to just be focused, be in the Zen and like plan out your week right? Or write a list of things. And I was just so freaking consumed, like in the like forward thinking. And it, I mean, it paid off, I'm not saying it didn't, we've grown a lot, we've helped a lot of people, but like it required me to have these times. And now I've implemented it regularly where I just slow down, I take a big deep breath. I spend more time thinking than I do doing. And I mean, actually, that's not true. I spend way more time doing, uh, but I spend a lot more time than I used to thinking because what I don't want you guys to do is the whole shift of like, wake up, journal, yoga, meditate, do a cold plunge, go in the sauna and then start your day. I'm telling you right now that like, cool, if you have the freedom to do that, but this whole, like have your whole morning routine and all that, I can't do that. I don't have enough time. Okay. I don't have enough time. I have a time. I have time to do what's most important to me, which is my physique, my health, my muscle, and my mobility. And like, those are the things that I train in the gym. As of right now, that's all I have time for. In a few years, when this business grows, or, you know, like, because I'm about to have my baby, uh, when he's maybe a few months old, maybe, I don't know. But like, as of right now, I know what I have time for without burning myself out. And I realize I don't need to do all the things. I just need to do what is most important to me. And it's a process of elimination, which I won't get into this much, like too much, but it's basically if I didn't have X, would I still be happy with it? Prime example. Some people say, well, I want to look good and I want to be healthy and I want this and I want that. And I'm like, okay, so imagine you had all those things happen to you. You, you know, your blood pressure was better. Your, you know, your, your, uh, blood sugar was better. Yeah. Um, you were stronger and you were more mobile, but you were still as fat. Would you be happy? And they go. No. Okay. So that's actually the most important. And then I go, well, I, I guess when you put it that way, yeah. So that's fine. But like you actually looking better and losing body fat is the most important thing for you. That's cool. Let's work on that first. Probably a lot of those health things will happen after. Um, and so I had to use a lot of those for me and kind of go through that thought process. So basically, you know, the last couple of years of my life have been very crazy. I've had times where my fitness journey has suffered. I've had times where um, I've let a lot of things not be important that should be important. And, th and the reason I'm explaining this to you guys and kind of opening up about it is because I see every week within our program and out people that go back and forth 
on saying what's important to them, but not taking consistent action. And we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. I mean, how many times have you said, and this is when I say said, it does not have to be out loud or to your friend or to your wife, conversations in your head count. Okay. How many times have you said, I really want to be healthier. I really want to eat better. I really want to lose the weight. And you know you do, and you know it's important, but you don't take consistent action and other things get in the way. Your job, funds with your friends, whatever, right? I would hope if we're being honest here, you said a lot, maybe more than you can count. And that's all I'm saying. Now, for me, it wasn't it wasn't really fitness. It was actually other life things. Everybody, I hope every husband and dad's like, my family's important, my wife's important, blah, blah, blah. And I understand. I really do think your career and as a man, you should be the provider. It's, I'm old school like that. That's how I was raised. And so I do think that is a very important role of mine, but not at the cost of, of, you know, I'm not saying I'm doing this, but not at the cost of like forgetting date nights and, you know, telling, I, I, I have a time where I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hang out with you. Yeah, I'm going to hang out with you. Oh, I got to take this call. And I'm like, man, I, I'm turning in, I, you know, I realized like I was turning into somebody that I actually didn't want to be, obviously, right? I was turning into somebody where I realized, you know, my actions, like what I say I want isn't actually lining up. And so balance is really hard. And probably around six months ago, I had an epiphany and I hope this, I hope you take, if you could take anything from this episode, and I've kind of touched on this in previous episodes, but I hope you could take this, is like, I think for a long time I was fighting for like balance, like legitimate balance. So those five buckets of life, right? 20% effort in every bucket, fitness, faith, family, finances, friends, right? Fitness, faith, finances. Yeah, whatever, five buckets. Um, and uh, I was like, there has to be 20%. There has to be 20%. And I just, I don't know. I think this whole like balance thing is BS. I don't think it actually exists. And after talking to, and I, I think as an entrepreneur and a CEO, I'm in a little bit different realm. I feel like I'm a different version of me than I was when I worked a nine to five. And so this isn't, I, this isn't against anybody. I just, it's different. It is a different world a little bit, just like if you're a first responder, a little bit different than your friend that might work at like Allstate or whatever. It's not a dig to anybody. It's just, you know, we have different nuances that it's hard to explain. So within this um, career, right, it's like it feels very unbalanced because it is. And the more you fight against living this like perfectly like symbiotic, balanced, beautiful life that freaking Instagram shows, oh, I spend so much time with my family and I hang out with my kids all the time. And I'm also have this snatched waist and this big booty and I also make $100,000 a month online, and I also travel all the time, and I'm just like, BS. Like, <laughs> it. that's what you see, but that's not the reality, and I fought against that because I'm on social media all day, and I thought it was this like achievable thing, and I could have just like this perfect life. Now, side note, have I become more balanced the last six months? Yes, I have, but I don't think it will ever be balanced the way that you might think about balance. And so it's a lot of conversations and communication with my family too. And be like, this is this is what dad does. This is my lifestyle. This isn't a forever thing. And they know it and they've seen the success. So I, again, I promised them, hey, this will happen. And guess what? I'm glad I did that because I fulfilled on these promises. And it also put pressure on me to be successful in what I told myself I was going to do. Prime example, I have a, and this is an example of a client. I had a client, I was really busy, police officer working all the time. He has a family, has two kids, and he started going to the gym five, six days a week. And he was going none. And his wife was like, I don't know why you're going so much. Can't you just spend time with me? And she wasn't trying to like sabotage him. She just missed him. And the kids were hanging out. And he's like, I'm going to the gym hour to an hour and a half. Like it's important to me, but I promise you it'll be worth it. Like I have, I think he was, uh, he didn't end up doing it, but he was trying to get on SWAT. Um, but he's like, I like, trust me, I want to lose this weight. It's causing marital problems. It's causing me to be depressed. I don't have energy with the kids. Like, just let me do this. Let me invest in the coach, blah, blah, blah. And he made all these, like, I don't say lavish promises, but these things that were, hey, this is going to happen and this is going to happen, but like, you have to let me just do my thing. I think a lot of that's just relational trust, which was awesome that he had a trusting spouse. But the spouse was like, all right, do your thing. And what do you know? Three, four months later, lost a significant amount of weight, felt better, had more energy, started hanging out with his wife more. 
started to improve their marriage and their sex life, um, started to hang out with his kids more, had more energy at work. He's a cop, so he felt safer doing his job because he's more physically capable. And like basically his wife was like, all right, you know, I have another level of trust because you, you know, even though you were taking away kind of temporarily from us, like I see what it did and all the value. And I feel like that's kind of where I've been in my life, hopefully is like, Hey, look, all these things I said, like, I know I'm working late. I know this, but like, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. And that communication, which I probably lacked the first year is there and a lot of checking up, right? Like, Hey, how are you doing? Am I spending enough time with you? Do you feel like I'm like too whatever? And it's hard because I, again, I had this switch turned on where I was just like, go, 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 go. And everything fell to the wayside. And maybe sometimes you, you feel like that in your career. Um, like you're so career focused or maybe you're so marriage focused, or I know this sounds weird, but I've, I've seen it at a fault to where you're so focused on your family that other things suffer. And that, you know, I'm not telling you that your family shouldn't be first, but if you're like so focused on your family that you're, you gain 40 pounds and you have pre-diabetes, like, is that really the, what your family wants and your kids want is, I mean, are you happy? How's that affecting your career? Right? So again, I'm not saying it has to be one or the other, but I'm just sh sharing just my journey with you guys over the last six months. I've done a lot of like I don't want to say internal healing, but um, I've like rediscovered my faith a little bit more. I have been spending time more with and doing things that I wouldn't do before. It was just work, 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 work. When I didn't work, I was working out and training and then my family. So work, training, my family, that's it. I'll literally have zero friends, zero social life, nothing. And I mean, I, this is the work we <laughs> year to do it because my wife's pregnant. So obviously we're not going out and getting drinks and doing that. But like, holy moly, man, I have had to just pull back. And then probably the fact that I'm having a kid is like, hey, how's this going to be? How are you going to kind of, like, how, how's your life going to be over the next year, two years, three years? And my team is freaking awesome. Uh, my my uh, head coach, he's basically the COO, Bryce. He's an amazing guy. And we have a lot of deep conversations on like, how do I want my life to look? And how do I want this? And the reason I'm, really just pouring out kind of how my life looks is because I really do feel as if I, if, as if like, I want to be busy guys. I want to be busy. I want to do these things because I want to show you it's possible. I do. And maybe, and I, we have some clients that are like really busy as busy, if not more busy than me. Okay. I have a client that uh, has like, I think five kids, like nuts. Uh, that's awesome. But like that guy's busy. Holy moly. You know, and he works, you know, 12 hour shifts and his wife works and like, they got a crazy life and their kids are in sports. I get it. But you know what? They're actually both very consistent with their fitness and they're both seem like they have a pretty solid relationship and they both seem like they're really good parents. Again, I say seem cause like, I don't know from a super personal standpoint, but I think you can do all the things, but even in that person's life, I don't think it's this like even perfect, beautiful thing. Like it's, it's, you got to pick which unbalanced life you want to choose. And that's what I had to do. I go, you know, even, even through this journey, I've had f close family and close friends. I feel be unsupportive for me doing this in certain different ways. And a lot of it's concerned, like you're working too much, you're doing this, but I'm just living a different lifestyle and it is unbalanced. And I have chosen to fully accept the unbalance and you could tweak it. Okay. Again, it's not 80% work. And then like everything else gets the scraps. Like it probably was the first year. Um, you know, I've learned to pull it back, but it's still very unbalanced, but I'm okay with it because I feel like when people say balanced, like on whose standards, because every successful entrepreneur I know, at least in the beginning stages, building it from freaking ground up, like I've done, has to work their ass off. That's unbalanced. There's no, <laughs> I'm not getting handouts. I'm not, you know, I don't have 300,000 followers on Instagram where people are just like randomly applying. Like a lot of our work we do as a company is super manual labor, giving good service, going above and beyond. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, it, I, I, and so for me, I understand it's going to be unbalanced and I happily accept it. 
It's just switching things a little bit. And one of the biggest shifts I've actually done in the past six months is reprioritize my fitness uh, and making it something to where I where it's fun. Because for a long time, I was like, this is a chore and I hate working out, which is never a good feeling. And so I avoided things. And I can't. I know you think, oh man, Coach Stephan can just work out whenever he wants. He makes his own schedule. He's the owner. I'm at the whim of everybody else because I'm on calls all day and I have meetings and it's actually on everybody else's time. So I can't tell you how many times I'm supposed to work out. I usually work out at 11 a.m. And I'll have like, oh, this call is happening. Boom, I have to move it. And then another call happens and I don't get my workout in. All the time. All the time. In fact, when I worked a nine to five job, I had more consistency. I was in better shape. Um, and this is actually when I was working a nine to five and another part-time job, right? Because in this job, you can imagine if you're working from 5.30 in the morning to 7.30, 8.30 at night, like, and your only break is a workout just to go back to back to back to back to back calls. Like that's usually my day. It's very, very, very busy. And so again, I, I, I find balance in accepting a little bit of it. And I had this conversation. I'll leave you guys on this. I had a conversation with somebody that is a veteran and in, in fire. And he tells me how much he works and he works like 70, 80 hours a week. And he's like, you know, it's crazy because all my friends just like do their shifts and then they're like out at the lake and they're having fun and they're like doing this. And I feel like all I do is work and my wife works, but like we paid off our house in like five years. Like, what? Like five years? Like you know, this is a 30 year mortgage, right? And he's like, yeah, we just like worked and worked and worked and worked. And he's like, but it's so worth it. And you know, again, like that, he chose that super unbalanced lifestyle because it was totally worth it with him. And I think that's all it is when people really choose to get in shape and and that 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 feeling of aggressiveness it's choosing to be unbalanced um and it, it's uncomfortable it sucks it sucks and so i think the only way to really accomplish that well uh when you have a big goal is to be a little bit aggressive because we've seen people come in that want to lose 80 pounds um sure you can do it in like a slow sustainable way we're all super supportive of that but I see the people that like come at it with a freaking vengeance. And I think they always do better. I really do. I think they're just, they're so laser focused and they want it so bad that they will do basically anything. I mean, you want to be healthy with it, right? But they're just, they're not going to give up. And they have bad weeks and they have good weeks, but like they don't care. They're just like one track mind. And the thing is, imagine that person losing 80 pounds in like, let's say like 18 months and then during that process, like in our program, we teach a lot, like how to keep it off. And what if during that process, they kept it off, they were in really, really good shape. Um, and then they learned how to keep that off for the rest of their life. Would that 18 months of super unbalanced be worth it? Yes. Here's the problem when you try to go really, really balanced is a lot of times along that journey, the thought of it being so long is actually what makes people give up. And I see it in business all the time. It's like the waiting game is actually the hardest game. Like, why do you think people can do 30 day challenges all the time? It's 30 days. Can I make my life a living hell and just eat like cut out sugar and all these things and, you know, no have process, don't have any processed foods and all this for 30 days. Everybody can do it. Why can we do this super strict, terrible diet, but only for 30 days or 60 days? It's the time. It's the time. So my thing is, if you're going to try to do whatever goal you have in a super balanced, super, you know, oh, it's just really just, no, I don't want to make it too difficult. I don't want to suffer too much. It's going to take so long that like usually along that journey, people lose interest or it's just, it's challenging enough, but it seems like it's never going to end. So they give up. I see it time and time again. But when people attack it aggressively, and they can get a little bit unbalanced, not maybe to the extent that I did, but they can get pretty unbalanced and accept it and understand like, this is the journey I'm going on and it is going to be weird and I am not going to have much of a social life and I'm not going to have as much free time and I'm not going to have whatever, but it's going to be worth it in the end. I think that that is the way to, to, to get over a lot of challenging things. I do. I mean, I, a really easy example is college. I would say that most people that go to college say they would have an unbalanced lifestyle. All I did was go to school, hang out with my friends a little bit and work part-time. 
and that's it for three years or four years. That's it. All they did is school. But it's like, would it be worth it for you to have a good job the rest of your life? Yes. And people do it literally every day. There's millions of college students. So why don't you just say, oh, just take, just take two classes at a time, you know, work a full-time job, just take some two classes when it's convenient. And, you know, eventually you'll have your degree. Like, why don't people do that? Well, most people are like, it's a terrible idea. Why would you just get to the goal quicker? Why don't you just rip off the freaking Band-Aid? And that's kind of how I view fitness. And I think that's probably why I took the really aggressive route in the beginning because I'm like, do I want this to be a part-time thing for 10 years and then bitch and complain that it never actually did anything? Or do I want to put every ounce of my soul and being into this and have it be more, and, and then be able to, take my foot off the gas earlier because I don't know if it's 10 years, I might just quit along the way. So in conclusion, I'm actually not like, now I'm just talking through this. I'm, I don't regret me be, taking it the way I did. Um, there's a few things that I, yeah, I wish I would have done different for sure. And I think that's how life is. Life's a little bit of like uh, regrets. And people say, I don't regret anything. I, I do. I mean, <laughs> I if we're really honest, I think people, I don't know. I don't know if you want to say regrets, but like, I wish I would have done things differently, but that's life. I, if I, I wish I would have known what I knew now back then, right? That is life. And so it's this constant learning lessons and reevaluation of like, Hmm, okay. And what, what I told you about the slowing down is the best thing that I've ever, 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 ever done on a very regular basis weekly, because the slowing down gives you time to reassess and be like, Hmm, I see. Wow. Okay. I, I guess when I was in it, I didn't really realize what was happening. Holy moly. I really let that person down or ah, I shouldn't have done that. I missed the gym because of X, Y, Z. And that's why we have our clients do weekly in-depth check-ins. So they have that self forced self-reflection because people don't like it. It's uncomfortable having to be honest with yourself, especially when you don't execute the way you want to. And so it's this forced self-reflection where you're like, wow, you know, I probably could have done this better. Probably could have whatever. And I've been doing that to myself. And it's actually let me catch things before they become too late. And that is really the biggest thing for long-term success. I mean, you got to think if you were at the weight you wanted, right? At some point, most people were, were at a weight they wanted, right? Like, you know, we train uh, just for example, clients like I used to be 130, but now I'm 180. So why along that 50 pound weight gain, where was the self-reflection when you were 130 to maybe 138? Once you hit that eight pounds, where was the stepping on the scale? The, oh, my clothes fit a little bit different. Where was the point where you were like, wow, okay, gained eight pounds. It's not great. I need to kind of cut back a little bit. Let me up my cardio. Like, where is that? And the reason people gain weight is there's no, there's no self-regulation and self-checking in and then action. And it, usually it's a lack of like accountability or maybe motivation or whatever you want to say. But like, if you really would have assessed right when it got there, you would have had time to fix it. And that's kind of, I mean, the best analogy that I can give you is like a bank account. Imagine you have like $20,000 in there and you're like, ah, oh, okay, I have $20,000. And you check your bank account every day and you're just spending. You're not, you're just kind of spending as you normally spend. And as soon as that bank account starts to really lower, maybe you look at your job at 18 and you want to keep it at 20. You're like, oh, whoa, oh man, I've been going out to dinner too much. I got all right, we got to chill a little bit. I'm not going to, I was going to buy that, you know, those movie tickets. I'm not, we're just going to chill at home. And, and that way you always hit like, or between that 18 and $20,000, hopefully it's a 20, but like you're never dropping below, but imagine you just were spending and spending and spending and spending, and you never looked at your bank account and you looked at it once every few months. Like, would that be a good idea? That sounds terrifying, right? Like you log in and you have like $4,000 and you're like, what the heck happened? Well, yeah, you never checked. You never looked at yourself. You never did any self-regulation. And if you're not going to track every little tiny thing, you need to have these daily check-ins. How am I doing? How am I doing? So it's a, like, I mean, that same check-in process, that analogy can apply mentally, can apply physically, can apply spiritually, can apply in your relationships, which is why I think the five buckets are well. Hey, honey, how, how are we doing this week? Like, am I, how's our communication? How are you feeling about our relationship? It's weird, like, right? But I'm learning a lot of that in therapy and counseling. Or I asked my son, hey, man, how, how, you know, I mean, maybe not as deep because he's 13, but kind of doing a temperature check with him, doing a temperature check with my body. How am I actually feeling? 
How do I look? How's my sleep? How's my stress? Checking in spiritually, praying, doing things. It kind of, I mean, like it's not, again, I had really none of that self-reflection for a long time, probably not until like 2017, but got really serious in like 2020 about it. But like, how do you improve and catch yourself while being unbalanced, but make sure that you pick your area of unbalanced, which I know is pretty confusing and I'll break that down. So if I am choose my unbalanced lifestyle, and that's what, what society would consider unbalanced, but I chose it. I'm like, hey, that's fine. I'm going to own a business, small business owner, entrepreneur. To everybody else, it seems weird. To me, it's normal. Cool. I used to be very unbalanced for the lifestyle I want, right? 80% in here, 20% everywhere else, not good. Now, let's just say I'm like 60% and 40% everywhere else, still unbalanced to society standards, but it's the balance that I choose and I'm okay with and my family's okay with. Now, how do I keep it at 60-40 instead of 80-20 when it used to be? Regular check-ins, regular check-ins, weekly check-ins. So things don't get out of alignment because when you're looking towards a goal and you're really aggressive, it's easy to just let everything go to the wayside. And I really do believe in like keeping your, I mean, for me, me keeping my physical health has helped me keep my mental health. And the fact that I've had my mental health has actually kept me sane enough and my anxiety and depression down enough to be willing to do these check-ins. Because if you don't have a good mental health, the check-ins feel uncomfortable and challenging and difficult and avoidance will be at an all-time high. And I know because I've been coaching for 13 years and people that aren't comfortable, like aren't in that good mental state, they don't like the check-ins and the check-ins are uncomfortable because check-ins make you actually face reality. And if you face reality, that means that you actually should probably take action on those things that you don't like and they don't want to take the actions so they don't check in. And that was me. And that's how I know this, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and we're all guilty of it guys. So I know this episode was super long. That's my life. That's how I balanced life. And it's uh, it's very strange, but I, I, I really think that if I can do the things that I've done and I'm doing, uh, I'm not saying I have it any harder. Uh, I'm not saying I have it any easier. I don't even know your life. Okay. I like, I don't view myself as like, man, I've had this super hard life. No, I've gone through some stuff. I'm very, very blessed. Um, but I, I mean, there's so many people that have so, so, so much worse than me. I'm not saying that, but like, if I can be really busy and I can work this stuff and do these things and the whole time keep my fitness at what most people would consider a very, very high level, um, you could do it too. You could do it too. I've seen people with traditionally unbalanced lifestyles really prioritize things that are important to them and their family. Um, and they're keeping within that bubble because they're having conversations and having communications. And the most important person to have these conversations with over anybody else is yourself. It is. I mean, like having those conversations internally in your head and having those check-ins will be the most valuable tool, but you gotta be honest, which brings me back to like episode three when I, I think the episode's titled Stop Lying to Yourself. When you have these check-ins, you can't pretend like everybody's listening. It's only you. Don't worry. You can just have the total honesty right there internal, where if you're you know, religious, you can pray, whatever you want to do. But like having that complete vulnerability is the only check-in that matters. Um, if you do a check-in and it's like BS and you're not actually vulnerable and honest with yourself, there's no point in checking in because you're going to tell yourself... Um, fallacies just to make yourself like, oh, did the check-in, good to go. No, 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 like real, real, real check-ins. And that's where the change starts happening. And again, I think I was avoidant for probably the first year on those check-ins because I knew, I knew that it was going to require me to work less and I didn't want to do it. And as selfish as that sounds, I mean, that's the truth, right? Just like people that are like, well, if I was really honest, then I would have to lose weight. And if I start losing weight, it means I have to change my diet and start exercising. And I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to really check in with myself and come to the reality that I am depressed and I hate my body and I am unhealthy because that means I have to take action. So I know that might sound harsh, but I really think that that's the reality. So hopefully this gave you some insight. I, I really hope this just gets you to think if you're going to do anything, take away from this episode, do those check-ins with yourself. I just want to give you guys some perspective on how, how it is like doing, wearing all the hats of, of life. Cause I feel like I've checked off a lot of those boxes 
And again, I'm super happy with my life. I'm very, very blessed. But like, I'm still in that state of like grinding and stressed out. And I go through the same emotions you guys do. And the number one thing, one of the number one things that has helped me over everything is still prioritizing my physical health, like a hundred percent. Cause I know on the days I don't train, uh, my mental health, I can feel it start to slip. I know on the days I do train, even if it's a rough day, I handle things better. So that's why it's so important to me. So appreciate it guys. I love you. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.